little bit about uh, the 360 videos I've been making with the 360 camera. Um, I'm going to start making two versions. Um, I can use the same video to make two different versions. I'll make a 360 version and a two-dimensional version, a normal version. Now, some people have complained about the 360 version being the quality is not that good. Here's the deal. The quality actually is really good. It's 4K quality. The problem is if you don't have a really fast internet, it can't download that 4K quality fast enough. So if you're not seeing 4K in the bottom of a 360 video and it's smooth without interruptions, then you're getting less than good, which I agree with you. That anything less than uh, 4K in a 360 video isn't really worth watching. Wow, check out the fire over there. Looks like they're doing some uh, controlled burning. So, this is a trail that I've been, I've been around this trail at least 60, 70 times. There's two loops. One's a five mile loop, one is a, almost a nine mile loop. Um, I have to be in really good shape to do the nine mile loop, but there was a time where I would pretty much almost every day run the whole loop, but right now I don't, I don't have that much. I'm not in shape for that. Anyway, I know this trail pretty well. It gets pretty thick and crazy. And this is a conservation area in Missouri, pretty much. So, what we'll be able to do is, at some point, there's some bluffs out there. Hopefully I can get to the bluffs kind of far away. Get to the bluffs, go along the edge where there's no people, come along the trail, and I don't have to answer questions about what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna set up the U-Kits. H1B1. What a terrible name. H1B1. Okay, so I've got a mile, about a mile hike, and it gets a lot, it looks like it's paved, but it's not. It gets a lot crazier up there. In the summer, you can't see, you can't see past the edges, but right now you can see deep into the forest. I've gotten caught halfway through this trail a couple times in the middle of the dark. So dark. You know, like I said, it's a nine mile loop. If you, if you take the extra loop, so dark you all couldn't see the trail. It's a little creepy to be out here by yourself in the dark. I've also gotten caught out here in the rain before, but it felt kind of cool. You know, I was running and it was raining and pouring and my hat was all hanging off of me. I felt like I was in the movie Predator, you know, <laughs> except there wasn't a predator, well, thank God. You might be able to see down there how there's a big long hill these are kind of like the eastern part of the Ozarks so there's a lot of rolling hills they probably max out at about a 200 feet difference from the bottom to the top they're not mountains but they're they're hard to climb you know especially when you're wearing a 15 pound backpack check out that tree it's fallen but it hasn't fallen On the kind of the ridge, we're walking along the ridge of a hill. You can see it drops off on both sides. My favorite trail in the whole world is this one. It's very, it used to be real secluded, but it started getting more and more popular. So more and more people started coming here. Kind of disappointing. I kind of feel like a hobbit on a quest. My ring, I have to throw it into Mordor.
You have got to be kidding me. I'm a hundred feet off of the trail over there, and there's some people coming down. They may have turned that way. I don't want to have to explain what I'm doing. You see the problem with dawdling around and having problems with your antenna or something? Is that now the sun's down, and I just got ready to go, so now I'm time limited again. And that's not something you want in QRP. I got good power. <laughs> Looks like we're walking home in the dark, boys. I should use this as a table. I forgot to bring a pen and pad, so having a long QSO isn't going to happen. I'm going to have to type it in my phone. I don't hear any activity. Note to self, bring a mat to sit on. The towel's not good enough. <sighs> so loud. trying to answer a CQ right now. Somebody called CQ. But I didn't get their full call sign. I missed a call sign again. Okay, the strangest thing, I swapped this wire for that wire, and now I can tune. For some reason I couldn't tune 40 and 30 meters, but now I can when I swap those wires. All right, so what I did was I reconfigured, last chance, reconfigured my antenna, and I put it that way and up higher. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I ripped the bag at the bottom of it and all the weight fell out. So I had to tie a rock to the end of it. You gotta make do, don't you, in the field. Um, I like this spot, but obviously it's hard to throw a antenna up into these trees. Because one of the problems I had, I would throw, I didn't want to throw that way because if it goes down, there's no way to retrieve it. You have to get to the other end of it. If you go that way, you just hit stuff all the time. So, um, it's, there's lots of trees to throw into, but there's too many trees to throw into. Very challenging environment. All right, QRP, the U-Kits. Um, I think because I had to have that big old antenna tuner, I think that diminishes the output by a lot. So I think the U-Kits with a big, without a good antenna tuner, which is kind of always the, I don't know, the catch-22, is that what you say about the U-Kits that I don't like? Is that without an antenna tuner, it adds a bunch of, having to have an antenna tuner adds a bunch of stress. Every time you change bands, you have to, a manual tuner, you have to change it. Um, so I don't necessarily like the U-Kits that much. And I'm going to, I know there's alternatives. I know there's antennas that are cut for the right length and I could do that.